this segment that I'm, I'm doing now is, is really going to be about leadership, which is, uh, which is a passion. It's a passion for me. It always has been. Um, as a young boy, I, uh, believe it or not, six years old, I can remember climbing the tree and, and uh, trying to figure out what, a, what, what, what kind of CEO I would be and uh, how I would lead an organization. So uh, maybe that's one of the, the seeds that uh, brought me into the Air Force. Uh, right after high school. Um, as, a, as an enlisted person, I always tried to take positions in charge, so I, maybe that's always been a part of me for some reason. Um, things really took off for me uh, from a leadership point of view when I took command of the uh, AMDS, uh, 459th AMDS, and that was a unit that had failed in HSI uh, recently, and um, um, now Brigadier General, soon to be Major General Harris, uh, took a chance on me. Um, and um, when I took that unit over from a leadership perspective, it, uh, it was broken. And um, God gave me a concept, uh, some people call it a doctrine, and it was call it's called uh, Practicing LAP. And LAP, L-A-P, stands for Leadership, Accountability, and Professionalism. So I've, from that day, I guess before that I lived my life like that. but. Um, that concept infiltrated um, all of the people in that unit. And we turned a, um, a failed HSI into an outstanding, which could happen at that time. And it was not about really the HSI that was uh, transformational, it was the people. And uh, my, my idea when I created the, uh, the doctrine or the concept was I wanted people to arrive at the UTA on Friday and be leaders, not get that leadership um, track on Saturday afternoon. I needed them to show up and be leaders. And so the concept of practicing LAP is that you're a leader when you arrive at the UTA and you're a leader when you leave the UTA throughout the month. You know, you're only in uniform two days a month and you're something else the other 28, 30 days a month. Uh, 20, 29 days a month. So I wanted you to be a leader and that concept to be a top of the mind kind of thought process throughout the month, you know, whether you're a mother, father, teacher, professor, or whatever, I thought that if you were in that leadership mode throughout the month, then when you came and showed up on the UTA, we didn't have to jumpstart you. You were already there. And for the, for the mission that we had at that time, you needed to be a leader when you showed up. And uh, it was hard kind of getting that concept across initially uh, because you just had to drive it home. You had to show people. And I think more than anything is um, you had to be an example of it. And um, so showing up first in the morning, being the last to leave, um, being accountable for your actions, being transparent, uh, being a professional. You know, uh, Maya Angelou has a has a, has a poem that says, it's not what you do that people remember, it's how you did what you did. I'm paraphrasing that, but, but that really means a lot. If you make people feel something, good, bad, or, or ugly, they're gonna feel it for a long time. They're not gonna forget it. They might forget what you say, but they're not gonna forget how you made them feel. So as leaders, 932nd Wing, 932nd Medical Group, um, we have to make sure that when people show up here to the UTA to give of their two days, that we make them feel like they're needed. Because sometimes they come here from their civilian lives broken. They come here to get away from that. So I always tell my guys, if you practice leadership, accountability, and professionalism, number one, you're gonna mend the broken hearts and the broken spirits that come here on the UTA. And when they go back, they're gonna be better people and better leaders back in the society. And that, that's what the Doctrine of LAP is all about. Um, so I, I, it was successful, and um, I wrote a book about it. The book is called um, uh, Dancing on the Razor's Edge. It's kind of interesting because um, the title of that book I wrote on a sticky notepad one day when we were going through so much trying to uh, get to the HSI and get everything right. I came back from a from a meeting or something, and I said, hey, 
this day is like dancing on a razor's edge. And then after about five months into writing the book, I found that sticky notepad, and the book became that became the title of the book. Um, the second book that I wrote, um, which is a compilation of thoughts and quotes that I've been writing since I was about 13. Uh, it's called Thoughts of an Inspired Mind. And uh, they're a compilation of my thoughts and um, thoughts and quotes of others uh, who have uh, inspired me uh, for the last 40 years. So real good stuff. And uh, I'm going to continue to write. I'm going to continue to speak uh, and hopefully continue to lead uh, young minds and souls because I think if you lead yourself first, that's the whole thing, leading yourself first, then you're capable of leading others. And people will see that because you're going to be an example to them. So, um, leadership is key from, you know, from the time you get up to the time you go to bed, leadership is key. So, I, I guess I'll leave you with that. If, if you'll practice lap, um, your life will be aligned and in balance. And uh, people, you won't have to, you won't have to say that you're a leader. People will see that you're a leader and gravitate to that. Thanks.